Our first speaker is Michelle Hoskins, who needs a little introduction. Standards International, Little Miss Wow. I hope you're ready for the first speaker, full of boundless energy and enthusiasm, but here with a serious message for financial planning professionals everywhere. Pay attention to number one first, which is ourselves. Without your personal well-being, how can you look after others? Michelle Hoskins. I love you all dearly, and um, I'm going to share a few stories with you today, but one of the things I want to start with is we are at a conference which is called Humans Under Management. And in 2019, the financial well-being bandwagon is well and truly hurtling into financial services. We know it is, we've heard about it, and you are literally smashed over the head every single day, being told to do more for your clients, understand your clients more, be there, learn more, find out more, don't focus on the assets, focus on the humans. But do you know what the problem with all of that is? There is one single human that we've all forgotten about, and that is yourself. 22 years I've been doing this. I've been coaching financial advisors for 22 years. And every single conversation that I've had in 22 years has always rolled back up to the human sitting in front of me. Because when you are all right, when you are firing on all cylinders, when you are well, and your well-being is at the center of your world, everything's all right. The regulator doesn't bother us. The need to increase our qualifications is a walk in the park. So for me, and for the next 30 minutes or 26 minutes, you are the most important human. And I think we would all do very well to remember that just a little bit more. So let me ask, let me ask you, who's sitting in this room today being exactly where you plan to be in your life, in your career, in your business? Are you surrounded with all those people around you that you've chosen to be there? Are you happy? Are you healthy? Have you spent the time to design your life? Or maybe what we're suffering with is your realization that actually when you've been spending so much time in front of your clients designing their future life, helping them achieve their dreams, when you walk out of that meeting, you realize, actually, my life's not on track. Maybe you're at times overwhelmed by the regulator, by the crazy lives that your clients are bringing to you every day. And maybe just times you just think, you know what, I'm done. I had, I had fully grown men, financial planners, <coughs> running businesses in tears as their PI renewals arrive. This is real. And why? Because while you're so busy changing the lives of clients, you've neglected the most important life of all. So I want you to imagine a future where you're in control. Your life's good. You're free from your business. You're free from your clients. You're surrounded by people in Team U that bring out the best in you, that make you happy, that put fire in your belly, and when you spend time with them, you wish that that moment could last forever. Now, if this is the time that we want, do you not think that we need some new thinking? Now is the time for us to do this. Financial well-being is on the agenda and it's high up the food chain. But please, please do not forget about you as the most important human of all. I want you to come every single morning into the office, into your life, feel like you've been shot out of a rocket as opposed to shot by a rocket. I want your well-being to be at the centre of every single thing that you do. And I can tell you that after 22 years, there is not one single problem that exists in any of your businesses that hasn't got a direct relationship to you as a person. If things are not going right in your business, 
it's because things are not going right with you. If things are slipping, standards are slipping, the team are losing their way, it's probably because you've lost your way. When I ask you who is the most important client, you all tell me the name of a, a client that you love or the one that you spend most time with or that energises you when you spend time with them. But you've totally missed the point. The most important human is you. It's you. It's not your wives. It's not your partners. Yeah, children are high up there. I get it. But you know that if you're, you're doing well, everybody's doing well. Now is the time to do this. And it's very real. What's going on in the world is very real. Financial services is going nuts. There's no two ways about it. Increased qualification, increased demands from clients, more, complic more complicated family structures. We've got well-being issues. We've got mental health issues in our communities. In June this year, I was invited to go and speak in Australia. I went in the summer, I went for a week and a half, and I spoke at the AFA conference. And when the organisers said to me, so, you know, I would like you to come over, and I was like, well, that's great, I'll happily do that. What, what's, you know, what, what would you like me to achieve for you during this conference? And the response absolutely silenced me. The guy said to me, I want you to get them to stop killing themselves. Now, I can handle pressure, right? I consider me quite good at my job, but that was a new one on me. Australia, our family, our financial services family in Australia has seen over 25 suicides from financial advisors in our family. Why? Because they cannot take it anymore. Increased qualifications, the Royal Commission, slicing off of commissions. They can't take it. They are literally jumping off cliffs. This is our family, our community. Add to that, I had a phone call from a client, one of our family in the UK, and he proceeded to tell me on our phone call, and I, the only reason we phoned him, actually this, this coincidental phone call, was because I remembered it was his birthday. And I phoned him and said, how are you? How are you, you, know, how are you? what's going on? And he went, I'm not good. Michelle, I'm not good. I said, I said, why? What's going on? He went, well, on April the 7th, I actually planned to kill myself. Our family. This is true. I said, what? He's like, yeah. And I said, I said, like, what, why? What were you? He said, I, I, can't, I couldn't take it anymore. I was overwhelmed by life. My relationship with my wife is breaking down. My PI renewal came in. And I got a complaint. And I said, if you don't mind me asking, I said, why, why the date? He said, because the day before, the life, my suicide clause was lifted on my life insurance policy. This is our family. I could tell you a hundred other stories after 22 years of chatting with advisors when you take your eye off your ball, it starts to go bad. So just think about you. Now, before I dive in, and I've skipped a load of slides because you can keep them, but I just want to ask you this. Can you remember who you could have been, who you should have been, and who you were excited to become before the world told you who you had to be? Are you sitting in this room today being the person that as a little boy and a girl you knew you were going to be? And let me ask you this question. Are you happy? And I mean really happy. I don't mean, yeah, 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 I'm fine. Yeah, 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 life's good. I mean happy. Because when you spend all your waking moments designing and shaping the happiness and the well-being and the lives of your clients. You become the poor relation. So are you happy? Are you living your best life? 
Are you doing everything that you want to be doing? Are you surrounded by people that bring out the best in you? Or are you surrounded by people that you have no idea how they got there? Are you learning and living the life that you knew you were going to be living or hoped to be living? Are you happy? And if the answer to that question is no, you need to do something about it. You need to put your oxygen mask on before helping anybody else. What powers you? You know, what are you not doing anymore that you used to love, that gets you excited, that got you excited? So put that sparkle in your eye, that twinkle, that fire in your belly. You know, what are you doing when you feel alive? This sector is insane. You study so hard. You give so much. You spend so much time. You sacrifice so much for the benefit of others, the good that you do, right? But what about turning that in on you? on your life. It's all in your hands. All in your hands. Now, I'm going to talk about a study because this is what I want you to take away. In 2008, the government conducted a study, um, the Foresight Study, which was the New Economics Foundation. It's the NEF study, known as the NEF study. And what they did was they investigated quite extensively what created happiness. What created well-being in people? And there are five ways of well-being. Now, I'm talking about this because I want you to take something from this, as you, as humans, the most important humans to me in this room. But you should be talking to your clients about this. So let's, let's have a little look what we've got. So the first one at the top is connect. How do you make a happy human? You connect. You be connected to the right people, to yourself. You spend time building relationships with those that matter, with those that bring out the best in you. <coughs> Who's in your life that you have no idea how they got there and have no place in that life? You just accumulated them as life generates too much life. Who's in your business that has no place being in your business? They're not bringing out the best in you or with anybody. Who in your life should you be having more in-depth relationships with, more intimate relationships, spending more time with those relationships? Who are those people? Who are those people that you've neglected somewhat because time, busy, work, studies? Connect real deep, intimate connections. So for those of you that have boyfriends, girlfriends, husbands, wives, when was the last time you went on a date? When was the last time you just, you know, got a babysitter, decided that work wasn't important and you went out on a date? When was the last time that happened? You and your connection with yourself and with others is the most important part. Isolation will kill you. And isolation doesn't just mean I live on my own and I don't see anybody. People, be, people can be surrounded by lots of people and be totally lonely. Connect. Build relationships. Surround yourself with people that bring out the best in you, that get you closer to becoming the person that you want to become. The second one is be active. Get off your backsides, like move. Fit, get your fitness back in shape. Get your diet in order. Be healthy. Live a healthy lifestyle. Get them endorphins pumping through your body. I don't want to hear any excuse why you've not gone to the gym or why you've not worked out. It's all made up. Be active. Feel alive. Like, you know, what, how fit and healthy and well do you want to be? Get moving, get involved. Don't just plough all your energy into the business, into the profession. Feel alive, get moving, get involved, get active. Come up with a fitness plan, a regime. Have other interests outside of work. 
because most financial planners are pretty boring, right? <laughs> You're pretty dull. Like, I can probably count on one hand how many people I know in this room, just scanning the room, who have got really fun-packed, full, fruitful, energised lives outside of the work. What defines you? You are not defined by what you know or your qualifications, let me tell you. How energised is your life? Get active. Pay attention. Do you ever actually pay attention of what's going on around you? Your environment, how you're feeling, the people, what they're doing, the impact they're having on you, when you're happy, what makes you sad? When people say to me, how are you? Not all the time, but at times I say, you know what? I feel like I'm living in a heightened sense of awareness. Now that might seem strange, but if you've ever experienced it, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. It's like you're just aware. You're aware of what's going on around you. You're not like this on your phone. Leave today and just sit on the train, the bus, in a cab or whatever, and just watch the world. They're like that. There's a whole load of world out here. Take notice of what's going on. Take notice of the people around you. Pay attention. I could tell you a hundred stories about where planners have just missed things going on. They've missed their daughter's self-harming. They've missed their wife's affair. I could tell you loads of stories about it because you're not paying attention. You're not taking notice. Keep learning. I challenge you in the next 12 months to learn something that doesn't have a direct relationship with your job. I challenge you. Learn a skill that doesn't involve a textbook. Expand what you can do and how you can do it. What about those things that you loved to do as a kid, when you were at college, when you were a young adult? What were you? What could you have the potential to do before life told you what you had to do? Keep learning. Energise your life. Energise your well-being by being more than the job that defines you. I see so many planners when I sit in front of them. They've just given it all up. They used to be good at the drums. They used to be in a band. They used to be great at golf. They used to play tennis. Why is it used to be? Why is it not, let's do that now? I'm filling my life with stuff that doesn't involve my day job. Keep learning. Be more. Be more. And finally, give. Not just give in the charity sense. Give you. Give your attention. Give your time. It, it's heartbreaking. The other day, I dropped Ruby off at school, and there was this dad. He literally slung his child across the road. He's on his phone, and then I looked over, and he was on Facebook. And his son is literally running across the road going, Bye, Dad! And his dad is paying no attention to him at all. And all I could do is just feel so sad. Give. Give a bit of you. But not just to everybody else. Give a little bit of you to you. It's magic <coughs> what we can create in our own lives. Now, I've not had an easy run. I've not. I separated from Ruby's dad. I went through a terrible time. My whole family pretty much disowned me overnight. And I remember the worst ever moment of that journey, which has taken over six years, was when I nearly drove my car into the central reservation of the M1 one evening. That's bad. And for little Miss Wow to tell you that is bad. So it's okay not to be okay. But I'll tell you something, you have to focus on the single most important person in the world. And that is you. It has to be you. Before anybody else, 
before any other human even comes into it. Because when I'm all right, I'm a great mom. I'm a great coach. I'm useful to you. I'm helpful. I energize other people. What are you going to do next? And I want to end on this. I love that quote. Like, I'm one up for my quotes, but that it says it all, right? Who are you keeping warm that you shouldn't be? What are you doing for other people that don't deserve it? Who are you spending time with that you don't care about? What are you giving up in yourself that you shouldn't be? What are you sacrificing to be a great financial planner? Today is a gift denied to many. And we ain't getting any younger. We're not. Now is the time to do all those things that you want to do. The people, the things, the activities, the hobbies, the experiences. Now is the time. You are not required to set yourself on fire to keep anybody else warm. I'm going to be here all day. I want you to share with me your stories, what's going on, what's going on in your business, what's going in your, on in your life. <coughs> Let's talk. Because males are the worst at it. They will not open up. If I make any of my clients cry during a day with them, I consider that an absolute success. Thank you very, very, very much.